In this section, we're going to go through some of the most common electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So we're going to go through a few different examples where we replace a hydrogen on the aromatic ring with some other atom or group. So in this first one, we're going to look at a halogenation where we replace a hydrogen on the aromatic ring. And this AR is just um, an arene abbreviation. So we can replace it with a bromine or replace it with a chlorine. And the reaction and mechanism for both of these are identical. Just one uses Br2 as the electrophile, the other uses Cl2. So first, let's just look at one of these reactions and then we'll go through the mechanism. So here, we'll just use benzene and later we'll see that you know, this can be other um, substituted benzene derivatives. And I want to explicitly draw in one of the hydrogens. And let's add Br2. Now we looked at before the fact that if you just add bromine to benzene, no reaction occurs because bromine is not a good enough electrophile. But what we can do is add iron tribromide. And what that is, is a Lewis acid catalyst. And that catalyzes this reaction so that the bromine is reactive enough as an electrophile to replace the hydrogen. So the product will be the aryl bromide. The byproduct, as we'll see in the mechanism, is HBr. The catalyst gets involved, but it comes out unchanged during the course of the reaction. So for uh, the bromination, you actually need iron tribromide as a catalyst. For the chlorination, we'll use iron trichloride as the catalyst. So let's take a look at the reaction mechanism. And these mechanisms are going to have two parts. The first is going to be generation of the active electrophile, and the second part is the electrophilic aromatic substitution. So let's look at both steps. I'm going to abbreviate electrophile as E plus, so generation of our electrophile. And that happens when the bromine and the iron tribromide react together. So here's the bromine, Br2. Here is the iron tribromide. And because this is a Lewis acid, Lewis acids want electrons. It's an electron pair acceptor. Well, the bromine has electron pairs, so the first step it's just reaction between the bromine and the Lewis acid to form a Lewis acid base adduct. I'm just going to write the FeBr3 instead of drawing them all out. Now, the iron was neutral and we added electrons to it, so now it's negatively charged. The bromine was neutral. We donated its electrons, so it now has a positive formal charge. This species here, and specifically, it's actually this bromine, is our electrophilic source of Br+. So we don't actually have Br+, floating around in the solution, but this is essentially providing the Br+. Plus. So now the second step of these mechanisms is the actual electrophilic aromatic substitution. So we'll say the EAS reaction. 
So now we're going to take our aromatic ring. Again, I'm going to draw one of the hydrogens in. And our electrophile. Like that. Just rotated it down to give us some space here. So now what happens is the pi bond of the aromatic ring attacks this bromine, and then the electrons in this bond go into this bromine, making it neutral. So we've added the bromine to this carbon of the ring. That leaves this top carbon void of electrons, so it has a positive charge, plus we have FeBr4 minus. So now what we need, we need to reform the aromatic ring. We also need to get back our iron tribromide catalyst. So in the final step here, we'll take the electrons in this bond, they'll leave the iron, go over here to grab the hydrogen. These electrons will reform the pi bond to the aromatic ring. So there is our bromination product. We also generated between the Br and the hydrogen, HBr. And then we also released our catalyst, or regenerated our catalyst, iron tribromide. So that is the halogenation reaction mechanism. If you wanted to do the chlorination, everything is identical except you replace the bromines with chlorines. Every step would be the same. Our second reaction is a nitration. So what we're doing here is replacing a hydrogen on the aromatic ring with a nitro group. Again, it's really important to point out this is a nitro, NO2. So it's not NO3, it's not NO, it's not NO4, NO2. And it may even help if I draw out um, the full structure of the nitro group, just as kind of a refresher from GenChem. So remember you have the nitrogen, a double bond to one oxygen, a single bond to another oxygen. This oxygen has a negative charge, the nitrogen has four bonds, so it has a positive charge, and that's um, the structure of the nitro group. So the way this nitration takes place, and let's look at it on an actual aromatic ring. Here's benzene. The reagent for this is a mixture of nitric acid, HNO3, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And this acidic solution replaces the hydrogen with a nitro group. So again, let's take a look at the mechanism. Again, there's two parts. One, we have to make our active electrophile. So we'll just say electrophile generation. So what we want to do is see what happens when we mix the nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So here's the nitric acid. 
HNO3, and then the sulfuric acid, which we don't necessarily have to draw out this full structure, but we will. So in the case of these two acids, sulfuric acid is the stronger acid, so it's going to be the proton donor. Nitric acid is weaker, so it actually acts as a base in this case. So what we do is we use lone pairs on this oxygen and just do a proton transfer. And here's our conjugate base, I'm going to abbreviate SO3H minus, OSO3H minus. Now, what I want you to recognize here is that we have water attached to the molecule. Water does not want to be attached to this molecule. It wants to come off and just be neutral water. So what happens pretty rapidly here is just push these electrons down and we'll lose water. And what we end up with is NO2 plus and water. So this, I'm just going to abbreviate it as NO2 plus. That is the highly electrophilic nitronium ion. And that will add to the aromatic ring to put the nitro group on there. So now let's do that step. So we'll take our benzene ring and as soon as that comes near this highly electrophilic nitronium ion, this will rapidly react to add the nitro to the ring. Just like um, the bromine added, we still have the hydrogen. We have the nitro group and this positive charge. Now, again, we've temporarily broken the aromaticity in this ring, so we need to reform our aromatic ring. And this step does not require a strong base at all. Um, so you could use the conjugate base of sulfuric acid here as your base, or you could use the water as a base, anything with a lone pair. I'll just use water. So we use that as a base. That'll take this proton. Those electrons will come over and reform the aromatic ring. And in this case, we formed H3O plus. So that is how we nitrate the aromatic ring. Our third substitution reaction is the sulfonation. So we replace the hydrogen with this SO3H group, which is a sulfonic acid functional group. And the Full structure of that, uh, if we want to draw that out, we have the aryl group, and then we have sulfur with two double bonded oxygens and an OH. And this is uh, this is a pretty acidic hydrogen on this OH. So for this sulfonation, we have our benzene ring. And what we're going to react this with 
is we're going to use what's known as fuming sulfuric acid. So what that is, is we take sulfur trioxide gas and bubble that through sulfuric acid. And this mixture is known as fuming sulfuric acid. And what this does is it replaces the hydrogen with the sulfonic acid group. So once again, for the mechanism, same sequence. First step, electrophile generation. In that case, we want to see how the sulfur trioxide reacts with the sulfuric acid. So here's sulfur trioxide. And we react that with sulfuric acid. I'm going to abbreviate here. So here's our acidic proton on sulfuric acid. And that proton is going to react with a basic group. And that can be one of the lone pairs on the sulfur trioxide. You could actually do this using one of the pi bonds here or the lone pair. We're going to use the lone pair. So there is our proton transfer step. So now we've added the hydrogen here. We have three bonds on the oxygen, so it has a positive charge. And then our conjugate base. So this um, protonated sulfur trioxide. This we can draw a second resonance structure for, which shows the positive charge on the sulfur. And this is our active electrophile with the positive charge on the sulfur. From here, we can do the EAS reaction. So we'll just use benzene. And let's, I should have done this up here, let's abbreviate this to make it a little simpler. Just SO3H plus. So the benzene will react with that electrophile just like we've done a few times already. Use that pi bond, attack the electrophilic sulfur. From here, we need to reform the aromatic ring. So we need to use a base. Um, in this case, again, you can use anything with a lone pair. Uh, probably the most obvious thing to use here would be your conjugate base from the sulfuric acid. So now you've reformed the aromatic ring. And you're done.